we've had loads of requests of how to sort of produce this diagram at the start of this video, but a little bit slower. <laughs> the Instagram posts are very snappy, very quick. They're just trying to give you some, some insight. But we've had that many messages about how to produce this in a bit more detail that I thought I'd just uh, jump to YouTube and produce something proper and from scratch. So the project in question is a housing scheme that we're doing in, in Liverpool, small housing scheme, affordable housing one. And I was using the diagram to demonstrate our design process. There are a couple of other steps before we get to that finished one, but I'll just keep to the finished one for the purpose of just how to produce that sort of diagram. The software we're using is V-Ray and SketchUp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm using this um, this base model just to give me a bit of a, a head start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these. And I'm just gonna copy and paste it into a, into a new SketchUp file, just so I've got a bit of a starting point. Modeling all this context was just a case of downloading a, an OS map in CAD and just extruding and giving them a little bit of detail with a, a pitch roof and the like. So I'm just grabbing all this context. Everything that I think will be in the shot. Control C. Fresh model. And then just edit, paste in place. There we are. Then what I'm going to do is just bring in these three just to give me a guide. this off as well this top v-ray axle model you can't beat an axonometric diagram as well or an isometric whatever whatever you want to call it they both have rules but i don't get too worried about that um and the yeah the the, the axle diagram is just it's just a very powerful diagram really and it it holds you in good stead when it's when it comes to presenting to you know planners, tutors, clients, and things like that. Now, just to speed the model up a little bit, I'm just going to turn the profiles off. And then the first thing I want to do is then just create the kind of the dumbed down diagrammatic version of the units. Now sometimes you retrospectively do these, sometimes you can be a bit naughty and you've kind of arrived at a design and you need to you need to kind of go back and just just fit a few diagrams in to explain your process. Sometimes your process might just be off the top of the head and I, I think that's absolutely fine. But nonetheless, you still have to justify it, whether it's before or after. And these diagrams are great for that. So just created a nice simple shell. Make that a component. Just call it a diagram house. And now I can delete that first one because I know there's two there, like so. So just just wanted them in as a guide. Then we had a little alleyway here. That was just to help with being access and things like that. No idea why that's not lining up. That's what sometimes you just model it in isolation. 
then it behaves. Okay. Then you might want to do just a simple rear fence as well. the component trick to make life a bit easy for myself. I've just turned the x-ray view on there just to give me the ability to grab that quite quickly. And obviously you know, you'll, you'll have instances where the component doesn't quite cut it, so then you just manually put a couple in. That'll do. This doesn't have to be too accurate. We're just, we're just talking diagrams. Okay, so we've got our basic mass in. Then we designed a front dormer. So I'll just model this off over here. I'll just hide the other components as well, sometimes that can get a bit annoying. Just something like that. It gives you improved headroom for the loft space. So they were quite important, but we wanted to set them back a little bit as well, so they were not too overbearing on the street. I'll just explode them intersect with selection and the reason I've done that is you want the line work to be perfect you don't want you don't want something I just I just group that again you don't want it penetrating through because the line work won't show up when you set a, a V-Ray material in a minute. And then very simple, front door, and just three windows. This is a very simple, affordable housing scheme. So we've not gone too mad with design features, but we still try to keep good proportion, good size rooms and things like that. So we set them in. And then we've got our nice simple diagrammatic houses. Now one thing I did want to emphasize in the diagram, this is important to know, is that the eaves line of these houses matches the adjacent eaves line. So what I want to do is I want to grab that Actually, pull that down. I thought that was going to happen. Let me group that off again. Hide. Just pull that down, just so the geometry stays nice and clean. So that's important that to retain that eaves line, and then the same for the ridge line as well. These are all little planning tricks. Let's just drop that in again. So this is what I mean about, see the way there's no now intersecting line. So then V-Ray, when it's rendering, won't pick that up with the material. I'll explain in a sec. So let's same again. Let's um, intersect the two. Hide the roof off. Just get rid of the uh, the excess. Okay. Right. So we're away. Then what we want to do 
is crack. A couple of V-Ray tools open. One is the the actual kind of the, other, the settings, and the other one is the Cosmos browser. <clears throat> I'm going to slow a couple of cars in the front. Little cars and characters, I think, really help give a sense of scale and things like that. I think it adds to the diagrammatic feel as well. We'll get some people in. It's always nice to tell a, a, a little bit of a story, you know, these are all the new homeowners. Okay, then we want to set parallel view. There's a default isometric view that I like to use as well. And then view animation, add scene, just so you can come back to that exact view. Right, then in the V-Ray settings, what I like to do is, I like to set a material override first. I then like to make a new material, and it's called Tune Override. And this Tune Override gives the, the material uh, edge, basically, you know, like a hidden line edge. And then you can give it a, a coloured base. Now, to give you an example, the surrounding context had that loaded in previously. As I say, I've borrowed some bits from a, an existing project. And what we want to do is we want that to be a, a, a mid gray. So the material override wants to be that original tune material. So that's that gives us that, um, basically that nice blanket gray across the site. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see there, everything's got a nice lined edge, which is perfect. That, that That's exactly our starting point. But then notice this little tick box here can be overridden. So then what, what I then like to do is make multiples of these and then uncheck can be overridden. So we've got that master override material, but then just a handful of other colors that we turn that overridden ability off. So I'm going to then rename this as Proposal Lime Work. That's the proposed houses. And then we need to create a base material, which wants to be a soft red. I'll just call it that, but like a pastel red. I think red is, is always a good colour or any, any offshoot of red. I think that's a good colour to emphasise your proposals. There's nothing clearer. So then our base colour wants to be that soft red. We uncheck can be overridden. And we apply that material. Let me just group all of them and they should. There we go. So there we go, it's let us apply that material, it's kind of superseded the overall override, which is you know the result of unchecking that. Let's make that a little lighter, a little bit more desaturated. 
And then I want to make a third one to just emphasize the roads. <clears throat> so let's duplicate that. Make another genetic material, call it road. And make that a touch darker. And there we go, I think that's nice and clear. Maybe just lighten it off a touch. And you can just see the little parking line now as well. I think that's nice. That really adds to the to the diagrammatic feel. Now in the settings of the tune material you can change the opacity and the width of the line work. And you can see, I think it looks quite clumsy at the minute on the houses. So let me just turn all that down. Let's go 0.6. And what was in the other one? Let's just match it, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. There we go. Much more subtle. We'll emphasize the the surrounding line work in a bit in Photoshop. So that's how you arrive at this point. I then like to add a dome light so I can load in a HDRI. To control the rotation, tick use transform. And then let's use the uh, the Cosmos browser to load in a HDRI. We copy that and we add that into our texture. There we go. And then what we're getting now is like two suns. The reason being is I forgot to turn off the main sunlight. Let's also turn down the intensity of the, the dome light as well. And just a little rotation. Just so the light's coming at a, a bit of an angle. So that's looking quite nice. I think we want to play with the exposure settings. Let's just drop that to 12. It's too much. 13. Okay, I think that's looking. Quite nice. You could even go a little step further and load in maybe some trees in the garden. And because there's an, an overriding material don't need to worry too much about it being in keeping with the the diagrammatic feel. You can turn that off there, use material override. We're gonna retain that. That looks quite interesting. It's not, it's not quite the right, not quite the right tree, but you get the you get the idea there. Just get that a little bit more 
sensible. Okay, and then really all you need to do from this point is crank the settings up to just high. I just drag that to high. Render output. Let's just check the save frame. Just make sure that we're in shot. And I may just change that to save 2000. And then we'll just save. Actually, yeah, and I, I like to just turn a denoiser on and just use the V ray denoiser. Set it to mild, but then just drop that to 0 0.3 and 3. Just smooth things out a little bit without being too destructive. Sorry, as well, I need to set it, I need to turn progressive off. Okay. So we'll let that render and I'll see you in Photoshop for the finishing touches. So the render's finished, we're in Photoshop and I think it's rendered really nicely as well. We nailed the, uh, the noise of settings there. And the thing that we want to do to make this feel more like a diagram is to finish it off with a nice thick outline. So I use the pen tool. I'm just going to go around the houses, I'm not going to include the fencing. And just very, very easy. Just work into the, the doorways. We'll sort this lady out in a sec. that gentleman there okay then you want to check your brush settings so full hardness and then drop the size down I use the bracket keys so something like that will do us and you right click so we've made a new layer we've made our path using the pen tool and then we want to apply a stroke to that path and you tell it to use the brush. We've just tweaked the settings. And there you go. And I think that chunky outline turns it into a, a proper diagram. Let's just zoom in. And then really I just I just rub out. So I just change the opacity settings to full. I just rub the characters out. I think that's quite nice, that little break in the line. And you might want to use a little bit of camera raw filter to just play with some fine tuning on the, the actual render. Increase the sharpness, the clarity. And there you go. Really effective way of producing diagrams using V-Ray and SketchUp. Nice one.